there YouTube, welcome back to the Allegheny Northern and Scale Model Layout. Uh, sorry it's been so long since my last uh, update, but we are doing things right, starting off with a good cup of coffee. And uh, the reason it's been so long uh, since the update is because we here at the Allegheny Northern are about to go digital. Um, so the last few months have been spent planning and following up on some various different aspects of which system to select and, um, and and what to go with. Obviously, I have selected Digitrax, and this is the Zephyr Express. Um, the reason I picked this um, is it seemed to be the most inclusive, easiest startup of all of the systems out there. Um, and it's been, well, let's see, I've been model railroading now for um, all, over 20 years. Um, so I started when I was just a, just a young kid with a Toys R Us you know, train set um, that turned into a, a freaking empire. Um, I have over 55 locomotives, um, all of which were DC, um, and a layout that takes up a space uh, roughly 16 by 16. Uh, right now it's single deck with a plan for a second deck, um, and it's all block control uh, to MRC 260. Um, tech 4 locomotives power it um, and then there's two ancillary um, cabs that control uh, the coal mine and the switching district um, and it's it's great I mean it works uh, for a single operator um, but if you want to do anything cool as far as some some real local switching multiple locomotives um, that's where block control really starts to show its um, its its limits. Um, so after a lot of consideration, um, I decided to go to DCC um, and join you know the rest of modern model railroading, and you get a bunch of these little guys. Um, so uh, they come with an instruction manual, uh, on how to slip them in, um, and then of course there's the there's the chip um, that they um, that they give you the little tape in case you need to isolate your your decoders, um, and if you're if you're technologically savvy at all, um, you're gonna run towards this thing thinking it's the coolest thing in the world because these chips, they do so much. Uh, they really do. They're, it's the the amount of things that you can program from lights to, to to different speed tables, all sorts of things. It's really phenomenal. But if you're new into this and you're like, oh my god, I just want to turn a train on and run a train, um, this is intimidating, uh, and that's part of the reason why I have stayed away from it this long. But uh, like I said, the, it's the layout's to the point now where it needs to it needs to move to the next generation. So um, these chips, a lot of them with the modern locomotives, they tell you that they are um, plug and play, and that's sort of true. Um, it's sort of true in that you don't have to modify the the body of the locomotive. The chips do fit in there, um, but not always do they touch the little brass tabs there. Um, in the right places um, and they don't really tell you that you know hey this chip might fit in here loose and if it's not a good connection it's not gonna work uh, so the first thing I learned about is after you read this little um, this little instruction packet on how to put it in you're gonna have to test fit it and, and see how it works um, and after that what you're gonna want to do is get yourself a good one of these that's right you're gonna want a good soldering iron you're gonna want a good tip on it um, because you're working with something that's very very small um, so you want to make sure that you can you know, properly get right to that area, not damage any of these other little components here. Um, so that's, that's very important. So make sure you've got a good soldering tip. Make sure you, you know what you're doing and don't touch anything that you don't want to melt. Um, because if you put a little bit of solder on there, what that does is it raises that contact just enough to make contact with the shell of the, um, with the locomotive and pick up the power. Um, so that's the first tip I can tell you right out of the bat. Um, if you're going to go to DCC, um, it's not plug and play all the time. Uh, I've done 13 locomotives already, changed out the decoders, uh, and I would say three of them went without any modifications. Um, so the odds are not in your favor that you're not going to have to modify something. Um, here are the uh, here are the lucky ones that started off here. Um, so you can see it's a it's it's a mix of Atlas, Cato, um, and Inner Mountain. Uh, I'll tell you what the Intermountain ones, they were the easiest, they replaced, they were they were one for one. Um, I had a lot of programming issues with the, the two Kato's, 
um, and then with the Atlas ones, I had to solder uh, a lot of the uh, the pickups on there to get the to get the chips to fit in there tight. And you'll notice when they don't fit in there tight because they they shake and they move and and that sort of thing, which you don't have a good contact. Now the nice feature uh, of this command station, and I don't know how well you're going to see the screen, but the nice feature of it here uh, is it does have a, a menu, which if you see that quick decoder setup you can very easily set your locomotive um, up and get it running um, and so what I've done here is I've set up one programming track which is right here and then one test track and all I'm testing for is to make sure one I can turn the lights on and off and the locomotive moves forward and backwards in the correct direction um, and then two um, this lets me program it separately um, so that I can change any of the other features that I want, whether, you know, if I want the ditch lights and that sort of thing to do anything different. Um, right now, I'm not doing any of that fancy stuff. All I'm doing is getting the, um, getting the layout uh, to up and running. So, we'll put a locomotive on here and I'll show you what the readout looks like. So, here's the Inner Mountain. It is a Wheeling Lake Erie. Uh, although it doesn't matter and you'll notice the, the the locomotive number here so all of my decoders have been programmed right now that the locomotive number matches what its digital address is that'll change when i start doing consisting and that sort of thing but right now for the standalone locomotive um it this locomotive's address is at 6354 easy way to remember it so if i go over to here um and i i ask the digitrax uh, command station to to uh, tell me what it's set at i just have to hit read and what it's doing right now is it's reading the chip um, and it'll immediately tell me everything about it as far as you know what the address is and, and what its various distributions are now those cvs you see that cv 29 um, this is one of the issues i had in the beginning it wasn't programming correctly not on this locomotive but that cv 29 controls everything um, for getting your locomotive up and running so um, do your research understand what these variables do because the numbers that are there um, those numbers all tell you something very important about the locomotive so you, you want to understand what's what's going on there all right so we're going to go ahead and take this one uh, just into regular right now uh, it, it's telling the the main line that it's looking for a decoder programmed at three um, so if we take our our locomotive here and we put it on the the run track um you know there we go just like that okay we're on the run track um and first thing is you gotta turn the track power on so track power on um uh, and if we put it into forward and now as i said it's, it's setting to decoder three we know that this one's decoder 6354 and nothing happens um that's because the signal is not being picked up by that chip so therefore it just sits there but let's change let's change this here a little bit Let's go in and tell it that our locomotive is actually number 6354. And tell it train again. Okay. And let's go ahead right now. Um, none of the functions are on. So let's get the headlights on. No, nope, actually the headlights were on. See so if you saw that, it's very, very dim, but um, the headlights do turn on and off. That's function zero on this one. So just by tapping the zero key, I can turn that on and off. Right now it is set that if the train is running in reverse, that the lights will automatically jump to the reverse side. And so that's the first test you know, okay, my locomotive is responding. And just by turning up the throttle, we have movement. Therefore, um, you know, we've probably got control of this train. Obviously, if we take a locomotive of any type, doesn't matter which one, and we put it on the track uh, next to our 6354 so there's our there's chessie and we tell this one to move you're going to get movement in the one with the chip but you are not going to get any movement from the other locomotives which is really good if you're trying to join a consist on the layout that sort of thing um you know you you can control your locomotive conversely we can change it and we can make 8571 our train put it in reverse and 8571 will move and 6354 will stay now the features that I like about digital command control is the ability to have the walk around throttle um, so this particular model 
is 100% expandable through the local net network. Um, so all you need is the correct components and the correct local net cables, and you can go wireless, you can go infrared, you can control signals, you can control switches, and that is the um, the benefit of this system. So if you're like me, where you have a, a coming double tier layout, or you already have a double tier layout, um, and then you maybe have a staging yard that's behind a wall, and you might need to do a little bit of shunting back there just to get your get your car sorted before you bring them out on the layout. It's real nice to be able to take your throttle, walk around and see what you're doing. Um, you know, if you don't have a second operator who's strictly running the yard. So um, let's take a let's take a quick spin around here. We'll we'll come around the train room. When you're looking at a layout that's roughly this size, and sorry, not all the lights are on, but um, you know, it's it's a little bit difficult. You can see the start of the um, second layout level up there. Obviously, there's no track up there. It's just being storage at the moment. Um, but when you have this number of tracks, this number of um, you know trains and potential places to be operating. You know, you want something that's going to let you, um, it's going to let you operate with, with the freedom that DCC offers you. Uh, right now, control, as I said, is right down here. And all of those pesky little block districts. It was all wired pretty much temporarily. That's why it's kind of a mess. Um, but it was, uh, you know, it, it, was, it was good while there was just a handful of locomotives. Um, but now that it's grown into something quite larger... Uh, DCC is the way to go. So uh, I'm in the process now of converting all of the layouts locomotives into DCC. It's going to be a very long process. Um, you know, each of those needs a chip, and uh, unfortunately, you know, they're not exactly the most inexpensive items. You're running anywhere between 25 and 35 um, a decoder. So at 55 locomotives, you can do you can do the math and figure out where that's going to where that's going to end up. Plus, of course, there's the um, difference in the the boosters and the command stations and the throttles and all the parts and pieces that make all of that work so um, One thing that I will advise you if you are looking at going DCC uh, Do your research do not buy a system until you've properly researched it. There's a lot of options out there um, And I settled on Digitrax. It seemed to be the most complete it seemed to offer the most accessories um, as far as train control and accessory control and it seemed to be one of the most user-friendly um, so that was my choice it may not be right for you do your research um, the other thing that you want to um, look at is the availability of, of components um, you know how, how, how fast can you get them um, and right now that's the that's the part that I'm in I'm trying to find all the decoders for all the different locomotives um, and it was a matter of sitting down and making a list saying these are the manufacturers these are the models and you know what chip it is if you go to digitrax they actually have a decoder selector so all you do is you type in it's an atlas gp38-2 uh, and it will tell you exactly what decoder you need to purchase for that um, so i found that really handy um, there's a lot in the digital command control that you need to learn and need to understand but there's very little that you need to know to just get the layout up and running so if you're just looking to start off with a system to, to get it up and, and running, um, I, I recommend going looking at the Digitrack stuff. Um, the other thing that, that you want to consider is how is this going to be used? I mean, are you converting an entire layout like mine um, into something that's, you know, totally digital? Or are you, um, you going to try to do something where you, where you mix and match? Uh, Digitrack says you can do that um, between the digital... And, and, a, and an analog locomotive um, everything that I've read tells me that you can't do that so don't don't try it <laughs> um, but um, do your research understand what it is that you're getting and and then take bite the bullet and get started um, so over the next few months I'm going to be buying the the various components and the various chips trying to get enough of the layout up and running um, and then I'm going to be replacing all of the wires um, to make a single bus line um, which is what all of this is going to start disappearing too. So all of this stuff is, I've already started tracing this out, figuring out where everything is, is going and you going to start breaking wires here and getting everything sort of relay, uh, relayed. So for the next two months, three months, whatever it takes, 
Um, now that we're winding out of summer and we're getting into you know, some cooler weather, uh, it'll probably be a lot more indoor nights um, where I can start making this conversion. Um, there will be more layouts as I, as I go through and I make mistakes and I learn about how digital command control works. I will teach all of you um, my do's and my don'ts. Um, and so far, none of my do's and don'ts have resulted in any damaged components, which is fantastic. Um, but I can see where I can see where that could happen. Um, the chips look delicate, um, and if you damage them with a soldering iron, like I said earlier, yeah, that's you can't fix that. But you can't be afraid of them either. Um, you know, they you can handle them. Um, you can touch the little components. Obviously, minimize what you're doing um, and, and how many you know fingerprints you got on them. But they're not they're not gentle. Um, they're not gonna they're not gonna you know turn to dust in your hands. So don't be afraid to get in there and and make it work. Um, and then here in the next couple of uh, months, hopefully, uh, we'll be fully digital and have some upcoming videos. Also, getting ready to start on the second tier. Stay tuned for more.